person here says, question for an actual wrestler. How often do wrestlers suffer naggers, such as a groin pull? Would expect more of those and pulled hamstrings for inactive wrestlers making returns. How tough Nagging to deal with in ring? Yes, yeah, as they can hinder for a few weeks. Well, I mean, as, as Undertaker noted in his documentary, it's it, and Hunter said the same thing. Working one time a year is really hard because, you know, when you're in there once a week, a couple times a week, your timing is there, like you're just, you're there. And then you take a long time off, and then you just got to jump right back in there and go, and that's hard. Now, the difference between me, Triple H, and The Undertaker, and there's a lot of them, I did not take basically eight years off and come back for WrestleMania matches. I came back to team with Filthy Tom Lawler against the Rock and Roll Express. So I wasn't coming back to try to have a 10. I was coming back to try to have a 5. I hoped it would be better than a 5. Five but, you know, twos. I wasn't in there, you know, trying to have a WrestleMania main event. I was in there to have fun, have have a, a fun, good match, entertain the people, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't deal with any any nagging injuries. But if I'd taken eight years off and tried to come back and do a WrestleMania match, yeah. I mean, dude, that'd be hard. You could do all of the cardio and all of the training and get in the ring with somebody. But it's very different once you're out there and there's actual people watching you. And you've got a, a you know a spike of adrenaline. Your heart's beating faster. You get blown up just like getting in the ring. I mean, it's it's different. So yeah, it's very difficult. And the thing with Edge was, Edge came back and they did a long false count anywhere match, which I don't want to take anything away from them. But there's a lot of laying down in a false count anywhere match. Oh, I'm down for ten seconds, which is actually like forty seconds away the ref counts. I get back up and do a spot and I lay down for nine seconds again. I don't want to take anything away from them, but my point is, compared to what they did yesterday, a Falls Count Anywhere match is going to be a lot easier. Yesterday, they worked their asses off for 44 minutes. And then afterwards, they were asked to redo some spots, and Edge got hurt. It shouldn't even be surprising that a 46-year-old man, who's had, what, two matches now, got hurt doing a 44-minute, you know, physical match, where Randy Orton was working the hardest that he's worked in probably maybe his career. I don't even know. But yeah, things happen, and it sucks. But that's just that's the reality. This is not easy. But it's also not real, okay? Like, yes, a guy got hurt because it's a very physical thing. But they're not really wrestling. They're not really trying to defeat the other. So then the scale is, well, what level of fake can you accept before it's too fake? And for some people, redoing some shots at the end is too fake for them. I don't Whatever. know what you're, what you're even... <laughs> I, for, for, I, I don't know where the, the, the debate over how you rate these things. Who cares? I don't care um, about rating. But I do care about taking something away from the performers because they did some reshoots. I, I well, my only question with that is I'm I'm not doubting you or anything like that, but did they actually did they actually have a 45 minute match that they went back and did reshoots with, or and not like it matters, but did they do 20 minutes one day and then do 15 minutes the next and look? No, at it things was all and, one afternoon. So it was all one afternoon. And then and they if did you a watch the match from start to finish, I mean, they start they start dry and they end drenched. Yeah. And I don't think it was like, well, we're going to start over in two hours and we're going to pour water all over you. I mean, they worked their asses off to do that match, and then they shot some some pickups, as they call it, in film. So I look, I just, I look at this as the way kind of Dave did when it came to the, the play movie thing. I mean, these are all performances of some kind or another. And what Flair and Steamboat did, I mean, so if you... If you plan it all ahead of time, you know, like like C Savage and Steamboat did, or do you go back and reshoot like WWE and WWF has done for years, or whether it's this, whether it's that, how do you really know? How can you really tell? And does it really matter? Were you entertained? And that's really the bottom line. I mean, I think we get too caught up in these performances, and then we all, all fight over what we like more. Do you like Kenny Omega? Then you're going to love Okada and Omega and think that's the best. Did you like... 
this, then you're going to think that's the best. And it's just basically, you know, it should be a fun thing to kind of bandy back and forth over what you like the best or what you don't like. And, and, you know, you just kind of battle it out like it would be sports. But people, you know, really cling to this stuff and get too serious about it. And if you're that serious about it when it comes to this stuff, I don't know what to tell you anymore with it. The star ratings thing has gotten out of control. The, what people rate matches or what Dave rate matches, who cares? Whoever cared what Dave Meltzer thought about a match, it was his opinion. It was supposed to be a guide, not God. It's kind of ridiculous that we have to have these discussions and they're still tied up for so long, banding about. Either you liked it or you didn't. You're going to tune in again to see more or you're not. It's really that simple.